Hello, and welcome to Grand Prix Zion coverage for the MSEM format. Today we're watching the round two match between Just Nobody on UB Heart Collection versus PK Dragon on Landstorm. So this matchup is probably in Just Nobody's favor. Um, he's playing a very controlling type deck. He's got a hand attack main board. He's got a decent amount of counters. And having a... Our, our format's version of Young Pyromancer, um, which is Union Rail Strike Breaker. Having that main board gives him a fast enough like clock that he can probably deal with PK before PK has a chance to like grind through all of JN's counter spells. Also, JN having Selen the Cruel um, main board, which gives gives him basically infinite tax counter spells as long as you have cards in graveyard to pay for it, makes it very hard for PK to outvalue JN. However, um, JN's deck is technically a little bit slow and main port does not have any like a direct interaction other than like Thought Blossom. So if JN does not draw Duress or Stolen Secrets turn one and then misses Thought Blossom on two, um, it's entirely possible because we've seen PK go off on turn three and I believe there's no longer potential turn two, but turn three earliest, PK could go off. Okay, so PK is here saying keep, I guess, which could be, you know, could be like a big brain thing to get JN's uh, fears down. But I think it's more likely that it's just PK having a bad hand. We'll see. Just nobody open up with a fetch and grab Cradle of Corruption. This is a strange play, but what it does tell me is that JN does not have hand attack. Cradle doesn't do much of anything in this matchup specifically. I know JN's deck is teched to uh, really make use of it in the sense of he has Oracle Vision to mill himself, which is my primary cantrip. So if any creatures go into his graveyard, and he, he could potentially recur them with Cradle, even if PK doesn't have, PK only has four creatures main board. Um, and Selene will end up sacrificing Union Rail Strike Breaker tokens very quickly. So even in a matchup where your opponent isn't playing that many creatures, Cradle can, can still do some work. Okay. So yeah, JN opening up, he's just playing all these shock fetches. He doesn't care about losing life. He knows that if he lets PK go off, he's dead either way. It doesn't matter what life he's at. So he's not being too shy about thinning his deck and hopefully finding something better off of the draws as a result. And he's getting Murmuring Fault, he's taking one more damage again. And Union Real Strike Baker. These are very aggressive plays. And I think it's, yeah, I think Jayan is... So that signals Jayan does, definitely does not have hand attack. And if he has Thought Blossom, he's like, okay. Um, Landstorm can't go off turn two, so I'm fine with just playing Union Real here and then holding it up for turn three when they do have the potential to go off. Okay, so PK is playing uh, Primal Resurgence. Now that they have Land Aura here, Untappers become uh, mana neutral, or at least uh, the one mana the one mana Untapper becomes mana positive, and the two mana Untappers or the three mana or, or the three mana Untap all your basic lands um, become. Oh, okay, uh, a villainy being played out here. Um, we're going to see. Construct come through because Union Real Strike Breaker triggers on any non creature. But yeah, so JN just, I guess, straight up does not have interaction and is just hoping to raise PK, which I don't think is a good idea. Um, but I mean, if he, he if he hasn't drawn it, I guess it can't be helped. But I'm surprised in that case he didn't wall to something um, more aggressive. Unless he, he's just been doing this so he can hold up Villainy and next turn he's just going to drop Hand Attack, Hand Attack, Oracle's Vision or something, and then just shock PK for six. Okay, so PK's options here are... I don't believe they can... Like, you, you can go off turn three, um, it, but not in this situation. You need to have a land... You have need to have a land or a turn one, turn two, Verdant Haven, and then you can start going off. Here they still need to find Verdant Haven, or another land aura on the island. Yeah, the shock fetches 
Well, see, for, for Jayant, he doesn't care about the shock punches, but for PK, it, um, they're really going to, like, quicken the clock at which Jayant can kill them. Unlike Jayant, however, um, PK's mana base is almost entirely basics. So, while Jayant is going to be pinging themselves for one each turn with Murmuring Falls, since they only have one basic, um, PK won't have that same issue. Oh, PK didn't play anything? Do they have anything at instant speed? Uh, I don't think so, that's worrying. Okay, so th through the Ashen Gate, which is essentially a shock forward to face in this matchup, and also investigate. Um, so you look at the deck list here. What does PK have at instant speed? They only have Shifting Train and Mystic Arts. So it could be that they have, though, yeah, so I guess well, they could just be waiting to Mystic Arts on end, but that would be a really bad play because JN was tapped out there, and it could give JN the chance to go for hand attack. Maybe they were hoping JN would try to go for hand attack and they would whiff so they can play Mystic Arts in response, but that's still, just like it. What it more signals is that somehow with four cards in hand, PK does not have anything. Or I guess, in terms of anything, they don't have um, another land aura, which they, which is what they really need to go off. So Jayan is now holding up mana, which means he potentially has Thought Blossom. Um, or he could just be like, I don't really need to play out anything more right now. I've got everything I need. Um, Through the Ashen Gates, instant speed flashback at end of turn, probably, and then crack in at clue is the most likely thing that's going to happen. Yeah, PK is now at around a two turn clock. Not exactly. And this is assuming that uh, Jayan has. Um, another black non-creature spell that but yeah essentially pk is assuming that jayan's hand is not just all lands um it's it's more than likely especially since we know that jayan probably doesn't have selen because if he had selen i believe at this point he would play it out and just unless he also has thought blossom and he only has one blue source but assuming he doesn't have Thought Blossom, he and he does have Selen, he would have played out Selen there. So we can probably say that the rest of his hand is. What well, what could the rest of his hand be? Memento Mori, and he's holding it up to to make uh, make them sack a, a Moonlit Hunter. Wave of DK, which is just not good in this matchup, but he can eventually cast to uh, just a ping with Villainy, and Dead Man. So, okay, so I think what we can say here is that he probably has a, either a land in one of those, um, and some either Memento Mori or Thought Blossom. Yeah, PK with that Wayfair Shrine just making the clock on themselves even faster. Okay. So they're tapping for... Entelon Erasure, okay. Um, this is actually... This is this favors JN a lot. I think at this point he would probably just... Oh no, he's going to Thought Blossom it? Okay, surprising, but okay. Because it would refill JN's hand... Uh, PK would need um, to draw Tilda Fields to start going mana positive. And yeah, they're all, the only untappers they would have access to are, I believe, Tilda Fields and Shifting Terrain. Shifting Terrain would be mana neutral. So yeah, I don't. And like, and they wouldn't be able to cast Verdant Haven unless they drew both Tilda Fields and Verdant Haven. Which I guess Jayan is just hope is just like 
hoping the longer I grind them out, the more likely it is to kill them. Okay, yeah, through the Ashen Gate on end. Yeah, I think letting that Antelon Erasure resolve might have just been the right play. It might have been the, like, yeah, letting Antelon Erasure resolve might have been the right play because it would have drawn Jay in a full clutch of cards. So unless he's very confident, oh no. Shock PK. Why is PK saying that's game? Uh, four damage on board. Am I missing something? I guess PK was just assuming that JN had a way to kill, unless I'm missing some line. But on board, it didn't look like PK was dead there. But anyways, we're going to game two. So what are si what is sideboards going to look like? Uh, for PK, we're definitely going to see, I think, publicly disgraced. Festival of Winter's Night, I don't think they care about villainy enough here to dilute their deck further. Starlet Rays. It, let's see, how many basics is JN? JN is only on five swamps. So that would cut JN off all of his blue sources, which is huge, and would leave them with only five. I could see I could see some split of public disgrace in Starlet Rays, maybe. Uh, on JN's side, seal the tomb. Um, maybe, I don't, because... Unlike other combo decks, Landstorm is weird in that it has like strange redundancies and it only has two copies of two copies of each of its individual win cons. So I don't think I don't think Jane would go for that. Abscond, the only I I maybe to steal land auras? I guess they're definitely siding out wave of DK, so and the wither is not coming in. Oink Ritualist is, oh, um, Oink Searchers is very good in this matchup, so Oink Searchers is definitely coming in, as is Mind Grip, I believe, because you definitely want that interaction. Um, so yeah, I think Oink Searchers and Mind Grip for sure in, Wave of DK for sure out. Um, not sure what else would come out. Maybe, maybe Dead Man and some Dark Bargain, and then for like a one of Abscond. On PK side, it's really hard to say what to, because like PK's entire deck is just engine, and once you start introducing like um, pieces that aren't essential, that could lead you to brick, it becomes hard. So I don't know what's split because I know that they're comfortable siding in publicly disgraced. They haven't played Starlet Rays yet, so I don't know if they'd be comfortable with that. But this, if they are comfortable playing Starlet Rays, this is the matchup to do so. Okay, let's see how they start game two. Looks like they're just about starting. PK is just about done sideboarding. Okay, so starting game two, PK starts off with the Maul, which isn't isn't super bad for their deck. They're probably hoping to hit turn one land or or they didn't have Verdant Haven. PK drew their new hand, they're thinking about it. And one thing is that like I know PK has played the deck before this GP, but they're definitely still have shown themselves to, and no offense to PK, but they've definitely shown themselves to be an inexperienced pilot of the deck. And again, no offense, this is like Landstorm is a very difficult deck to pilot properly, but given the first set in this tournament where they made multiple misplays, um, I wouldn't be surprised that if that was a reason that they were taking a little long to decide whether or not to keep or to maul. Um, both because of fear of making those misplays, but also because they're not as experienced a pilot, so they don't have all the lines worked out in their head. So they're just trying to like step through it. The TLDR is basically like just because they're taking a while to decide whether to keep doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad or risky hand. Okay, so Wayfarer Shrine for a forest. Do they have a primal insurgence or prismatic ley line? And they do. Which one is it though? Yep, Primal Resurgence. So they're on route to the turn three kill. If next turn they untap, drop Verdant Haven, like land Verdant Haven, they're on their way. 
but JN might not let that happen. Playing Swamp, playing out Duress. Let's see what let's see what PK's got. And this could be a huge swing here, depending on what PK has in hand. Okay, so PK has an interesting hand here. They only have one land, but everything else is a uh, reasonably gas. Because now, um, because till the fields each now net one mana, uh, but they don't cantrip is the issue. So PK's hand is actually like very reliant on them drawing another land and then another land aura. Okay, so they drew, so we know they had to have drawn that land right now. So 4-3, they no longer have Rejuvenation. They could cast Tilda Fields and then try to like scry into a Verdant Haven. Or how, how much actually, how much mana will they generate off of Tilda Fields? Um, Tilda Fields twice is net one mana each time. You're tapping for three on tap. I believe that would give them enough for buoyant. No, they actually they wouldn't be able. Okay, I'm wrong. Buoyant thoughts is triple blue, while prime motor surgeons only adds green. So even if my math is right and two children fields gets them to five mana, they wouldn't have the colors for buoyant thoughts. Okay, so JN Wayfarer Shrine for Swamp. He doesn't have any blue sources yet, notably. Um, okay, Dark Barkin. Maybe hoping to draw into one. And you notice he's keeping all basics so far. Um, this might be, this is probably, like, this is probably um, just in case uh, PK has Starlet Rays. Okay, so using Dark Bargain as a Night's Whisper, just going to pay two, draw two, pass. So yeah, PK is kind of in a bind here because... J okay, JN may not have interaction right now, but he doesn't need interaction. Unless PK has just drew Verdant Haven. In which case, dropping Verdant Haven... Okay, no, they drew Prismatic Ley Line. Um, and I'm not sure that this was the right play, because I don't know, actually you do, you do want all of your land orders on one land, but I'm just trying to think through whether or not, um, putting the prismatic on the island would have been a better idea with the untappers that PK has, because then next turn they'd be able to cast Boyan Thoughts. And then hopefully with Boyan Thoughts drawn to Verdant Haven plus gas. So tapping out for villain, no, not villainy, Oink Ritualist. And with Oink Ritualist on the field, it becomes very, very difficult for PK to win because Landstorm, as it sounds like, is a storm deck. In a storm deck, you want to cast a lot of spells. Oink's Ritualist makes you cast, pay two life for each spell. So now, a PK can only cast essentially 10 more spells, and that's not counting, um, that's only counting if they cast, let's say, not, or they only cast nine spells this turn. And that's only assuming that they cast those this turn, and not assuming that Oink's Ritualist swings out. Um, is nine spells even enough for PK to win? Like to generate 20 mana and then uh, hit JN with one of their win cons? I don't, I don't know that it is. Um, I'm going to, oops, I'm going to check here. Do they have anything that can deal with it? Um, what they might need to do is, okay, so this is, assuming they start going off, 
and drawn to fire and ashes. They can fire and ashes the oinks ritualist and then continue to go off. But that relies on that's like it relies on them drawing one specific card in their deck, um, which I guess is made easy. Uh, but the see unless they brought in the second fire and ashes. No, actually, even then, Mister Cards requires you to search for two different names. So actually, what they could do is if they brought in Fire and Ashes and Mystic Arts, they could Mystic Arts for Mystic Arts and Fire and Ashes. And wait, would that even work? No, it wouldn't work. Actually, I don't know what I'm talking about. They wouldn't have. They wouldn't eventually find. Uh, yeah, they would not eventually find Fire and Ashes. My bad. Um, See, I don't, I don't know that there's a winning state for PK here, other than just, I guess, play buoyant thoughts here, draw into both Verdant Haven and Fire and Ashes, play Verdant Haven, uh, shoot, or, or use it to generate red, shoot Oink Ritualist, and then continue going off and win this turn. They, PK is making the, because they play that Shock Fetch, that's one less um, spell that they're able to cast effectively. So unless they really need this island, I don't know if I agree with the decision to play it out. At least not until that, like they know they need the mana. I guess maybe they need blue mana here. So is this going to be a Tilda Fields? I believe this will be a flipped Tilda Fields, probably. Yep, taking off five mana. And that's Tilda Fields. Now they're gonna play it on the same land, is the question. Oh, actually, yeah, okay, it's two mana of any colors. So yeah, they're gonna play it on the same land. And that scry is useful. So now this land basically generates um, a whopping five mana, so that interaction was mana neutral, and PK gets to scry. Um, did they actually scry? Ooh, I don't think PK remembered to scry. Uh, that might come back to bite them. Because you really want to be filled at this point you want to be filtering out all you don't want any lands on the top of the library you want to keep hitting gas i think specifically here yeah you want to cast i think they want to cast boy and thoughts right right here right now they have the mana for it and boy and thoughts will be uh one mana positive in this situation so there's really no reason not to. PK's thinking. They have two cards in hand, one of which we actually we know what their hand is, which we saw it earlier, right? It's another Till the Fields and Buoyant Thoughts. So yeah, uh, that's five mana. Oh, they're casting. I I guess they're doing this to get maximum mana off of that Buoyant Thoughts. Which fair, but also, um, you don't want to, I think at this point, you, you don't want to think about mana production. You want to be thinking about drawing into, because you, you have enough mana. Really what you want to be doing is you want to be drawing into your, um, into either of your win cons. Unless they're not even thinking about shooting Oinks Ritualist, and they're just hoping, oh god, I hope I can generate enough mana without casting that many spells, and then just draw into my win con, which I didn't initially think was possible, but with, with this one forest generating, what is it now, seven mana, it, it might be possible that you cast five more spells, one of which is going to be this Buoyant Thoughts, because they literally have no choice, because that's the last card in their hand. Yep, and here comes Buoyant Thoughts, which is now net three mana. And it draws them four cards. So they're now fully stocked. Uh, 
it all comes down to what they drew here. Because right now they can only generate up to 11 mana, which is not enough to kill. They need at least 22. Or, sorry, they need at least 21 if they're going to kill with direct damage, and 22 if they're going to kill um, with empty the barracks. So they're thinking. I don't know what gets them out of the situation other than straight up cast another buoyant thoughts and dig for fire and ashes and then shoot the ritualist and then just continue to go off. Which is actually which is which is what's making me wonder like what are they trying to think like what options do they have? What are they thinking about here? Or maybe they do have fire and ashes, but they're holding it up because they're worried about wasting it, quote unquote, on the ritualist when they might generate enough mana to just shoot face and win despite ritualist. But I think it would be safer now because now you're so ahead. I think it would be safer just actually you would want to calculate how much mana you could do. But you would probably want to kill Ritualist. Okay, so that's down to three more spells that PK can play. Um, this generates net five mana. See, if PK does have Fire and Ashes, they might just they might have calculated it out and been like, okay, um, I can actually just conceivably have enough mana. Oh, they're paying nine mana. Or was that an accidental clear? Oh no. They just bricked? Oh no. And with four cards in hand too. Oh, that's actually, how? That's a really unlucky situation. So now Jayen gets to swing in for three. Um, making it so that PK can only cast one spell. Um, yeah, this is not looking good. So what this means is PK needs to draw Fire and Ashes right now or they lose. Okay, taps out for villainy. Oh no, does he have villainy plus one more? It looks like, oh no. Yeah, and that's it, because PK is effectively locked out of casting spells, and that's it. Just JN takes it 2-0 over PK, um, putting JN at 2-0 so far, and PK at 1-1 in terms of sets. Um, but yeah, that was a really good game. It just like, that was, it's just a hard matchup. Um, it's just a hard matchup for Landstorm, because even though Landstorm is unconventional and has, like, different angles of attack and isn't as straightforwardly intractable as other combo decks, um, it's, it's still a combo deck versus a control deck. Anyway, so we're going to see if we can get... I think these players in Hello, JN. Testing, testing. Oh, I hear you. Great. Okay, so, uh, Congrats on that win. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was a matchup I did not feel super favored going into, but it worked out That's well. interesting. Because I actually was looking at it, and I was thinking that you felt reasonably favored. At least, maybe not main, but in general, you, it felt like your deck had the tools to deal with PKs. 
first board especially. Game one, I think if that wasn't a multi five, I wouldn't have made it. I kept a hand that had no disruption, no dress or stolen secrets, and I was expecting to lose really fast. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was very surprised when it's like turn one, um, play nothing. Turn two, tap out for Union No Strike Breaker. Turn three, tap out for Villainy, and I'm like, hold on. Yeah, 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 that was the hand. Yeah, and I guess it's hard when, like, main board, your only, like, real interaction is Tot Blossom plus seven hand attack. Like, technically, technically, uh, it's I, hand, the, but my opening much hand had Tot Blossom, which is why I kept it. Rates. You need to get Salen down first uh, before they get yeah. down like land orals and stuff. Yeah, no, I I definitely feel like I am the aggro or at least the tempo. Like I need to win because otherwise there's inevitability that Landstorm has just top decking, which discard can't stop. One fun thing that I did realize playing okay. that game. All right, uh, I'm finally in. Jesus, it took forever. Okay. Yeah, because you were here, and I was just like, this that P2? Not um, can you guys hear me? Oh, we can hear you. Okay, all right. Hey, sorry, what were you saying before? I was just mentioning, I realized that game that, because uh, it was turn four after a villainy, um, game one, and I was holding through the Ashen Gate and uh, Thought Blossom, and I realized those two cards together with Villainy is 10 damage for 4 mana, because the flashback exile is exile it if it would be put anywhere else, but because Thought Blossom exiles, you can then oh, recast right. through the Ashen Gate and then reflashback it, so I had the potential on turn 4 to just drain 10, make 5 oh, that's tokens. Disgusting. That's an interaction. Yeah, that's... <laughs> Obscenely powerful. Oh yeah, I just wanted to ask, but, um, uh, Jan, why did you counter, or why did you counter Antel on Erasure? Like, what are you afraid of? Having? What was I afraid of happening off of that? Oh uh, yeah. Uh, it seemed like if I countered it, I had the win in hand, okay. so I didn't have much of a reason to let it resolve. Okay. I was holding a lot of black spells. It's possible I could have like drawn a seven that was all lands. Okay. So, so you already had the win and you didn't want. Okay. Because I was just thinking like, eh, it would be card match for you. Yeah. Mostly I was protecting my hand. Okay. Uh, PK, what happened? Oh, like, what, what was you like before in that last game when you ended up like, freaking out there? Uh, I was trying to draw into festival so I could bounce the Onyx Ritualist, okay. um, and it just didn't happen. So okay. interesting. I actually I didn't think that you, you cited him in uh, festival. Okay, so I didn't consider. I cited him festival specifically for Onyx okay. Ritualist. I was actually thinking like was I, I was deck. like, okay, he's got to dig for he's got to dig for fire and ashes on. And then cast that. That was what that was the line I was like thinking of. But yeah, festival makes that a lot easier, I guess. So was the rest of your four just like lands or something, or like lands and sideboard pieces? Um, yeah, it was uh, like uh, publicly disgraced, and then two mana auras. So not really okay. much. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Uh, if I dug into festival, I might have had a chance there, but uh, after I couldn't get it, I, it, my game was just pretty much over. I was worried that turn that you were going to be able to pull off comboing out. I turn two, I could have hit you with that stolen secrets, and I I realized on turn three when you started going off that I definitely should have grabbed buoyant thoughts and not drawn more cards. Yeah. I just assumed that you dark bargaining just meant that you didn't have any other interaction. To be honest. Yeah, that was my assumption too. I I um just didn't feel threatened by a five drop at that point in the game. Um but then you drew into two mana sources. So things changed a little. <laughs>
PK, did you bring in any Starlet Rays versus deck? Uh, that's actually what I ended up uh, doing was I sided out uh, to seek prophecies for two Starlet Scarlet Raises and uh, to seek prophecies for uh, the festival, and then I think I cited out uh, one of my draw spells, either uh, Erasure or um, uh, Boyant. I, I think it was one of my Erasures for Publicly Disgraced. Okay. Yeah, no. Uh, Scarlet Rays was one that I was hoping I could get off, mostly because your mana base was uh, mostly non-basics. Yeah, it was just like five blocks, and then just like everything else. Like, oh, no, no basic blue sources, just everything else is all non-based plans. So... When I, but so, so when I saw Jay and open all the two swamps, I'm like, ah, oh, so Starlight Race is kind of not as great as it could have been, even if even if PK draws into it. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I ended up bringing in my Onyx Ritualists and two copies of Mind Rip. Okay, not... Yeah. And you were satisfied with everything else in the deck main? Yeah, I was iffy on Memento Mori, because killing, um, what's the Moonlight Hunter? What's that card called? Yeah, Moonlight Hunter. Um, I wasn't sure how much removal I wanted to hold onto, um, because there's only one creature, but it is a really important creature to answer. Uh, but I ended up deciding to hold on to removal, and I sided out. Wave of Decay and one copy of Celine. The, I'm, yeah, I, I thought that the full playset of Mind Drift for sure, and then maybe like one Abscond or something. Abscond didn't seem like it did anything in that match. Oh, I was just thinking that um, you grab, you could grab a, a Verdant Haven, and then he, and then that cuts the. It's like another route of interaction, that was my thought. I, I checked every land enchant, and they all make the lands controller add mana, not the aura's controller. Mm, except for Prismatic Lane Line and Prime Perception. And he, he has... No, they all, they all say it's controller adds. Oh. Right? Oh, yeah, so no, no. stealing the land if you can't reattach it wouldn't do anything. Oh, actually, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm dumb. So they would still so they'd still be able to tap it and then add the mana. Okay. Never mind. Abscond. I, I checked that. I checked that. Abscond doesn't do anything here. Is this game um, two? This is uh, game 2 0. JN finish the set. Um. Yeah, I think I don't know that I have any other questions for you guys. Do you guys have any other impressions or stuff that you want to talk about regarding the set? Uh, not really. Just that Onyx Ritual is super good. Uh. Oh yeah, it's one of like the cards that came in from DHL that was like, I think like I think DHL was like there are lots of cards that because it was, it was a small set to begin with. So lots of it was just like I think not MSE and playable, and then but Onyx Ritualist, Onyx Ritualist, along with like a few others was like, oh yeah, okay, here are the MSE and playables. Yeah, it was interesting because there's a card already in the format that's very similar to Onyx Ritualist. I'm looking for it right now, but it's a uh, blue Ritualist. three one flyer. Oh, it's a blue three one uh, flyer. Ocean. Um, Keeper of the Shoal. Or something also, like that. I guess technically, like, in a similar vein, there's Rakiri Descent. Rakiri Descent is, like, only half as effective. And it's a and Uh, yeah, Oshin, Keeper of the Shoal. Um, and I was sort of waffling back and forth between which was better against Landstorm. Um, 
Which one shuts you down harder? I went with Onyx Ritualist, but not for any good, well thought out reason. Uh, I think Onyx Ritualist is better because Landstorm can generate enough mana that I can spend a couple turns, like, sitting there cantripping and casting its spells through Ocean until it maybe finds a solution to Ocean. Whereas Onyx Ritualist, if you're in a deck with any pressure whatsoever, they get, like, five to six spell casts to find an answer, no matter how much mana they have. That's legit. Then I guess I made the right choice. Um, 